Hello, welcome to Cyber and HQ. In this video, I have explained the concepts in simple terms for ISC2 Cybersecurity Chapter 1 Security Principle, provided real world examples and discussed how they are relevant to cybersecurity. Let's get into the video. The weightage of the Security Principle Chapter 1 in the, in the test is 26%. This means that you would need to answer 26 questions correctly out of 100 questions in order to pass your exam. So we have five modules in security principles. The first module is understanding the security concepts of information assurance. And the second module is understanding the risk management process. And the third module is understanding the security controls. And the fourth module is understanding code of ethics. And the fifth module is understanding governance processes. Let's look at what is CIA triad. CIA is a security principle that helps to form the basics of the development of security programs. CIA triad refers to confidentiality, integrity and availability. What is confidentiality? Confidentiality refers to the principle of protecting sensitive information from unauthorized access, use or disclosure. What is sensitive information? Can I say patients medical and health information or a credit card information or a financial data related to the business operations, revenues, expenses and financial performance. Why do we want to protect the sensitive information? Because it may cause identity theft, financial loss, reputational damage and other consequences. Protecting sensitive information helps to prevent unauthorized access and reducing the risk of security breaches and associated damages. How to ensure confidentiality is maintained? Let's discuss with an example. Let us say you have an online bank account and you want to add an extra layer of security to protect it. So you have decided to enable two-factor authentication which is a very good example for confidentiality which requires two separate pieces of information for authentication. When you try to log into your bank account, you enter your username and password. After entering your password, the bank website prompts you to enter an OTP from your authenticator app. You open the authenticator app on your smartphone and find the OTP that is currently displayed. You enter this OTP on the bank's website. The bank website verifies the OTP you entered matches the one generated by your authenticator app. If they match, you are granted access to your online bank account. So this ensures only authorized person can access the bank account. This process achieves the confidentiality. The next one is the integrity. Integrity refers to the accuracy, completeness and reliability of the data. It means the data is protected from unauthorized modifications, tampering or corruption and, and remains consistent and reliable over time. What happens if integrity is compromised? The first thing that would happen if integrity is compromised is data corruption, loss of trust and operation disruption. Let's say a company that uses an online storage service to store sensitive documents such as financial records, employee data and customer information. The company wants to ensure the integrity of these documents to prevent unauthorized modifications or tampering. To maintain integrity, the company implements the following measures. The first one is the digital signature. The company uses a digital signature to verify the integrity of the document. A digital signature is a cryptographic technique that adds a unique digital fingerprint to a document which can be used to verify the authenticity and integrity of the document. Any modification to the document will invalidate the digital signature alerting the company to potential integrity breaches. The next one is the version control. The company uses a version control software to keep track of changes to the documents. Each time a document is modified, a new version is created and the previous version are stored for references. This allows the company 
to easily identify and revert to previous version of the document if unauthorized modifications are detected. The next one is the access control. The company limits access to the documents to only authorized personnel who need to work with them. Each employee has their own unique login credentials and their access privileges are limited to their job responsibilities. This prevents unauthorized individuals from making unauthorized modification to the document. The next one is the encryption. The company can use encryption to protect the document while they are stored in the cloud storage services and during transmission over the internet. Encryption ensures that only authorized parties with the appropriate decryption key can access and modify the document maintaining their integrity and regular monitoring the documents for any suspicious activities such as unauthorized access or modification. This includes reviewing the logs and audit trials as well as implementing automated tools and technologies for detecting integrity breaches. By implementing these measures, the company ensures the integrity of its sensitive business documents preventing unauthorized modifications or tampering that could promise the accuracy, reliability and consistency of the information and protecting the company data assets from integrity failures that may result in financial, legal or reputational consequences. The next one is the availability. Availability refers to the state of something being accessible, ready and usable when needed. Imagine you work in a company that handles sensitive customer data such as credit card information and store it in a database. The availability of this data refers to its accessibility to authorized personnel when needed while protecting it from unauthorized access or loss. For example, if a customer service representative needs to access the customer database to assist a customer with a transaction, they should be able to do so promptly and without any technical issues. The database should be available allowing the authorized personnel to access the data they need to provide efficient customer service. However, if the database experiences a technical failure such as a hardware malfunction, software glitch or a cyber attack, it could result in the database being unavailable. This would mean that the customer service representative would not be able to access the data required to assist the customer leading to delays, frustrated customers and potential financial loss for the company. To ensure availability in cyber security, the company should take measures such as data backups and redundant systems and this ensures the availability. Next one is the authentication. Authentication is the process of verifying the identity of a user, system or a device. It involves providing proof of identity such as a username and a password and a fingerprint scan or a smart card to confirm that the user or device is who it claimed to be. Authentication involves the use of one or more factors to establish the identity of the user or a system. In other words, authentication is like showing your ID card to a bouncer at a nightclub. The, boun the bouncer wants to make sure that you are 18 years old to enter and that you are not using a fake ID. Similarly, when you authenticate a system or a device, you are proving that you are authorized to access it and that you are not an unauthorized person. Authentication is an essential part of cyber security because it helps to prevent unauthorized access to sensitive data or system. By requiring users to authenticate before accessing a system, organization can ensure that only authorized users are allowed to access and the sensitive information is protected. Authentication can also help to track user activity and identify potential security threats. In authentication, we have three principles. One is something the user knows and the second one is something the user has and the third one is something the user is. What is something the user knows? It could be a password, it could be a PIN, it could be a security question and answer, a personal identification number or a pattern on a touch screen. Something that the user has is a smart card, 
a physical token or a USB key or a mobile device, an access card, something that the user is a fingerprint, a retina scan, a facial recognition, a voice print or a palm print. Let's say an example, you want to access your online bank account. You're starting by navigating to the bank website and entering your username and password and that is called as single factor authentication. The website verifies your username and password and allows you to access to your account. However, since online banking involves sensitive financial information, the bank also requires you to provide an additional form of authentication to ensure the security of your account. To do this, bank sends a verification code to your mobile phone that is called as multi-factor authentication. You enter the verification code into the website which confirms your identity and allows you to access your account. This process of using both a password which is single factor authentication and a verification code which is a multi-factor authentication is an example of multi-factor authentication. If someone were to obtain your password, they would still need to have access to your mobile phone in order to receive the verification code which makes it much harder for them to gain unauthorized access to your account. This is why MFA is an important security measure especially for the applications that involve sensitive information like online banking. In the given example, something the user has that is mobile phone which receives the verification code for MFA and something the user knows is username and the password the user enters to access their online banking account. Something the user is can be a biometric identif identifier such as a fingerprint or a facial recognition that could be used in place or in addition to the username and password or combination for authentication. What is non-repudiation? Non-repudiation is the assurance that a message, transaction or an action cannot be denied by the sender or the receiver after it has been completed. It provides evidence that the message or transaction was sent and received by the parties involved and that they cannot later claim they did not participate in the transaction or deny that they sent or received the messages. This is often achieved using digital signature, timestamps and other cryptographic mechanism that provide evidence of the authenticity, integrity and origin of the transaction. An example of a non-repudiation is when you send an email with a digital signature to your client, the digital signature provides non-repudiation by ensuring that the recipient cannot deny that you sent the email and the content of the email has not been altered since it was signed. When you digitally sign an email, you use a cryptographic algorithm to create a unique digital fingerprint of the email that only you can produce. The fingerprint is attached to the email as a digital signature which can verify the recipient using your public key. If the signature is valid, the recipient can be assured that the email was sent by you and the, and the, and the, and the contents of the email have not been al altered in transit. If there is a dispute later on about the content or origin of the email, the digital signature can provide evidence that the email was indeed sent by you and the content has not been tampered with. What is privacy? Privacy refers to the rights and obligations of individuals and organization with respect to collection, use, disclosure, retention and disposal of personal information. What is PII? PII is a personally identifiable information is closely connected to privacy. The collection, use, protection of PII are important aspects of privacy as they involve the handling of personal data can be used to identify an individual. Individuals have right to privacy which includes the right to control their personal information and to know how it is being used. When an organization collects a PII, it has a responsibility to protect that information and to use it only for the purpose for which it was collected. 
This requires implementing appropriate security controls such as encryption and access controls and ensuring the individuals are informed about their data while being used and how they can exercise their rights regarding their data. Overall, the protection of PII is a critical aspect of privacy as it involves individuals to maintain and control of their personal information and to make informed decisions about how and when it is shared with others. Let's take an example. For instance, if you fill out a job application that asks for your name, address and social security number, you are providing the PII to the employer. The employer has a responsibility to protect this information and to use it only for the purpose for which it was collected, such as verifying your eligibility to work in the organization. Another example of PII is, a, is your credit card information. When you make a purchase online or in person, you may be asked to provide your credit card number, expiry date and security code. This information is considered as PII because it can be used to identify you and access your financial accounts. In both of these examples, the collection, use and protection of PII are important aspects of privacy. Organizations that collect PII must take appropriate measures to protect it from unauthorized access, use or disclosure. And individuals have right to know how their information will be used and to control its use. Let's move on to Q&A. Which of the following IAC2 cybersecurity concepts is concerned with protecting data from unauthorized disclosure or access? Option A, confidentiality. Option B, integrity. Option C, availability. Option D, authentication. What is confidentiality? Confidentiality is preventing unauthorized access to sensitive information. Option B is integrity. So protecting the information from unauthorized changes, keeping the information accurate and unaltered. Availability is uh, keeping the sensitive information available for the authorized users when it is needed. Authentication is the process indicating a person using a user ID or a password. So the answer is confidentiality which protects data from unauthorized disclosure or access. Let's move on to the next question. Let's move on to the next question. Which of the following ISC to cybersecurity concepts is concerned with protecting data from unauthorized modification or deletion? Option A is confidentiality, which is uh, protecting the data from unauthorized access. Integrity is uh, the data should be remain uh, unaltered and complete. And option C is availability. The data should be available for the authorized users when needed. Authentication is authenticating a user using a user ID or a password. So the answer is integrity because integrity protects data from unauthorized modification or deletion. Let's move on to the next question. Which of the following ISC to cybersecurity concepts is concerned with ensuring that data and systems are accessible to authorized users when needed? Option A is confidentiality. It is protecting the data from unauthorized access. Integrity is maintaining the data accurate and uh, unaltered. Availability is uh, having the information available for authorized users when needed. Again authentication is authenticating a user by using a user ID and password. The answer is availability because availability ensures the data and system are accessible for authorized users when needed. Which of the following is an example of security measure that can help protect integrity? Option A is antivirus software and B is backup and recovery procedure, C is access control and D is data validation checks. To choose the correct answer, we should know all the options. What is antivirus software? It is a software program designed to prevent, detect and remove malicious software. What is backup and recovery procedure? It refers to the process and technique used to protect and recover data and systems in the event of data loss, corruption or system failures. What is access control? Access control systems use authentication and authorization process to grant or deny access to sources, resources or information. Data validation checks are a security measure that can help protect the integrity of the data. 
data validation checks are used to ensure the data entered into the system or database is accurate, complete and consistent with other data in the system. So the answer is data validation checks. Let's consider an example of a database used by an online shopping website. The database contains a table that stores customer information including their name, email address and credit card information. To ensure data accuracy and consistency, the website uses data validation checks when customers submit their information during their checkout process. For example, when a customer enters their email address, the website can use data validation checks to verify the email address is in the correct format with the proper syntax and domain name. This can prevent customer from entering or invalid email addresses which can result in failed transactions or undeliverable emails. Similarly, when a customer enters their credit card information, the website can use data validation checks to ensure that the credit card number is valid and matches the type of card selected such as Visa or MasterCard. This can help prevent fraudulent transactions and error caused by typos or incorrect information. The next question is the which of the following is an example of a security measure that can help protect confidentiality. Option A encryption, option B is firewall, option C is intrusion detection system, option D is patch management. The correct answer is encryption. Because encryption involves transforming data into a form that can only be read or accessed by authorized users who have description The correct answer is encryption because it involves transferring The correct answer is encryption because it involves transforming data into a form that can only be read or accessed by authorized users who have the decryption key or password. The incorrect answers are firewall because it is a security device that monitors and control incoming and outgoing network traffic based on predefined security rules. And the intrusion detection system is also an incorrect answer because a security it is a Let's move on to the next question. Which of the following is an example of security measure that can protect confidentiality? Option A is encryption. Option B is firewall. Option C is intrusion detection system. Option D is patch management. So what is encryption? Encryption involves transferring data into a form that can only be read or accessed by authorized users who have the dec decryption key or password. What is a firewall? A firewall could be a hardware or a software that monitors and controls incoming and outgoing network traffic based on predefined rules. What is an intrusion detection system? It is a security tool designed to monitor computer networks or system for signs of unauthorized access or malicious activity. Option D is patch management. Patch management is a process of identifying acquiring, testing and installing software updates or patches to fix vulnerabilities and bugs in a computer system or application. The suitable answer would be encryption because encryption can only allow users to read or access by the authorized users who have the decryption key or password. Let's move on to the next question. Which of the following is an example of a security measure that can help ensure availability? Option A is load balancing. Option B is penetrate, penetration testing. Option C is network segmentation. Option D is intrusion prevention system. Before choosing the correct answer, we should know what are these options are. A load balancing is a technique used in computer networking to distribute incoming network traffic across multiple servers, application or other resources in order to optimize resource utilization, increase efficiency and improve performance. 
the main purpose of load balancing is to avoid overloading any single resource which can lead to reduced performance or downtime option b is pen testing it is a type of security testing that involves attempting to penetrate a computer system or a network to identify vulnerabilities and weakness that could be exploited by attackers option c is network segmentation which is a practice of dividing a computer network into smaller subnets known as segments or zones in order to improve security performance and manageability option d is intrusion prevention system it is a type of security technology that is designed to detect and prevent malicious activities from occurring on a network so the correct answer is load balancing because load balancing ensures security measure that can help availability the main purpose of load balancing is to avoid overloading any single resource which can lead to reduced performance or a downtime let's move on to the next question which of the following is a example of two factor authentication option a is a username and a password option b is a smart card and pin option c is a fingerprint scan option d is a security question option a username and password is an example of something you know which is the most commonly used form of authentication option b is smart card and pin this is an example of two factor authentication because it involves two different factors of authentication option c is example of something you are which is a biometric factor of authentication option d is something you know and not considered as 2fa since it is a single factor of authentication so the answer is b a smart card and a pin the smart card is something you have and the pin is something you know the smart card contains a digital certificate that verifies your identity and the pin is a personal code that only you know adding an extra layer of security to the authentication process let's move on to the next question which of the following is a example of something the user knows in the authentication factor options are a fingerprint scan b one time password sent to user's mobile phone c smart card with a private key d username and password combination i would say the answer is d username and password combination because it refers to something that the user knows knowledge based authentication factor that requires the user to provide information that only they should know such as password pin or answer to a security question a username and password combination is a common example of something the user knows authentication factor let's say an example fingerprint scan a is an example of something the user is in the authentication factor while one time password and smart card is an example of something the user has in the authentication factor so the correct answer is username and password combination let's move on to the next question which of the following is a benefit of non repudiation let's say what is increased data availability increased data availability refers to the ability of users to access and use data when they need it without experiencing any delays or interruption and what is improved system performance improved system performance refers to the enhancement of speed efficiency and overall effectiveness of a computer system or a application what is a greater data security greater data security refers to the measures taken to protect data from unauthorized access use disclosure disruption modification or destruction option d is ecs system administration so i would say the answer is greater data security because non repudiation provides greater data security by ensuring the sender of a message or transaction cannot deny having sent it this helps to protect against fraud disputes and other security risk non repudiation provides a high level of data security by guaranteeing the integrity and authenticity of the message and its sender which makes it a critical component of many security systems
let's move on to the next question what is the meaning of a privacy option a keeping information about a person secret option b providing information to anyone who wants it option c hiding information from certain people option d sharing information with anyone without permission i would say the answer is keeping information about a person secret because privacy refers to the ability of an individual or group to keep information about themselves or their activities being disclosed to others without their consent it includes the right to control access to personal information to decide how that information is collected used shared and to be free from unwanted surveillance therefore option a is the correct answer as it accurately describes the meaning of privacy option b c and d are incorrect as they go against the concept of privacy by either sharing information without consent or limiting access to certain people let's move on to the next question which of the following is an example of pii option a a company financial report an anonymous survey response a customer name and address option d is a generic email address example info at company dot com i would say the answer is a customer's name and address because a customer name and address is a pii information that can be used to identify an individual such as their name address social security number or other sensitive information a company financial report and a generic email address are not considered pii because they do not identify a specific individual an anonymous survey response may contain personal information but it is not pii if it cannot be linked to a specific individual let's move on to the final question a company stores sensitive customer data in a cloud based database what steps can company take to ensure the confidentiality of this data option a implementing firewall to prevent unauthorized access option b use encryption to protect the data in transit and at rest option c implementing strong access control to limit who can access the data option d all of the above the correct answer is all of the above because in order to ensure the confidentiality of sensitive customer data stored in a cloud based database the company should take multiple steps to protect against unauthorized access implementing firewall can help prevent hackers or malicious actors from gaining access to the system using encryption to protect data both in transit and at rest can help ensure that even if unauthorized parties do gain access to the data they won't be able to read it finally implementing strong access control to limit who can access the data can help ensure that only authorized personnel have access to it by taking all of these steps the company can better protect the confidentiality of its sensitive customer data and this is the end of the chapter 1 security principle first module and do let me know if you like my video thank you